Welcome everyone to Stoked, the ultimate Star Trek online podcast. My name is Chris. And my name is Jeremy. Hey there, J-Man. Hi. How you doing? You I'm right? exhausted. <laughs> you saw as far as you know, you didn't get the PAX plague, right? Nope, nope. Good so far. Yep. So this is going to be kind of a compressed episode of Stoked because we were actually at PAX all weekend. A little out of touch with what's going on in Stowe. Yeah. Which Although, is what the show's about. You know, we actually, when we were going all around PAX, we kind of did something kind of cool. We all, all with the whole Jupiter Broadcasting crew, attacked PAX. But we got a ton of great stuff, and we're going to be covering a lot of what we saw in, uh, t- uh, well, you're going to see this Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So Tuesday night's episode of Jupiter at Night, we're going to have a ton of cool, like our favorite PAX highlights moments. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got a couple, and I do mean one, two, three. I've got four fantastically beautiful moments that I appreciate. <laughs> Um, and then in Lotso, that's going to be coming up Friday at the end of the week. At filming live on Friday. Yeah, yeah. Released yeah. the following Thursday, yeah, is that correct? Yeah, I think so. So yeah. it's, you probably want to catch it live Friday night at mm-hmm. 9 p.m. Pacific, which is negative 8 GMT, just to catch that. We're going to we're gonna show you some of the exclusive gameplay footage that mm-hmm. we got. Because we all had cameras, we kind of, some of the booths don't allow cameras. So we snuck in there and got footage and we get like, like 10, 10 seconds. seconds and somebody yeah. would say, you can't film. And yeah. then somebody else would come up so and get 10 guy, seconds. Yeah. <laughs> So we got some really great exclusive footage, a lot of footage. I'm not going to say what we got footage of because we might literally get a cease and desist. So I'm going to save it for Lotso, but you guys are going to want to catch that if you want to hear all about PAX. We'll, we'll, we'll save it for this show. We won't really talk much about PAX, but we did find a couple of cool highlights. Yeah, I want to mention a couple things that I saw because I really want to get these f- focused, right. uh, maybe even done a math segment in the future. All right. One of them is a potential Stow compatible voice command software. Oh, that's been a frequent that's request. That's something I get... Uh, asked about a lot, and I haven't found a good solution for it. This might be it. Uh-huh. So watch for that. Okay. I'm really hoping to cover that. Uh, the name of it is in our show notes, if you want to check that out ahead yep. of time. Yep. Also, it's just some cool peripherals they had around there. Yeah. But again, going to try to check out and see how yeah. they play with Stowe. So we were looking at all that stuff with a stoked angle, and so we, we made a lot of contacts. So we're hoping to bring a lot of that different Including stuff in. Including 3D. Ooh. Might be something we look into. <laughs> Literally. Now, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, in fact... Um, well, we'll say that. We'll see if that works out, yeah. but that could be cool. Uh, now, we weren't completely out of touch. I got a chance to play the new uh, weekly episode that came out. Did you Yeah, out in the cold. No, I haven't, I haven't gotten a chance. All right, well, now you were here for some of the time while I played, yep. so you saw some of my impressions, mm-hmm. but I just wanted to say out in the cold is, again, another great episode. They've kept the quality bar high. Yeah, I, I was worried that the second episode might feel a little flat because it wouldn't be new territory mm-hmm. and new areas, mm-hmm. but in reality, it was actually all new stuff again. Nice. And it was really great gameplay. I saw, so before I got a chance to, uh, I, I, I worry, I risk doing this. Before I got a chance to play it, I mm-hmm. logged into the uh, Stow forum just to kind of see what the reactions were. Oh, right. Try to get a feel. And I didn't want to get any spoilers. That's the risk, you know, yeah. is you, you might see some spoilers. And one of the first things people were saying is, it was beautiful. It looked great. Um, That's always a nice thing. The, uh, the chat room, we're doing this episode live, by the way. The chat room, uh, DeFox points out that it was a little short for him, but he thought it was really good. And that was my general impression. Yeah. My, I thought it was actually just the right length. Just right, huh? And I said, oh, that was a little short. That felt just right. All right. And I think specifically, uh, we moved through it because we did it as a group of three. We moved through the ground combat pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I really appreciate it. You always that. do when you're with groups. Yep. And I, I thought, I, I, but I, again, still felt that the Breen were a much more fun ground combat than I'm accustomed to. And you were talking that their, their ship... The different abilities of the different classes of ships, you kind of have to pay more attention in space I, against I, Debrine. I felt so, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I felt like uh, when I when I warped into the first um, zone in this new episode, there's a pretty, uh, I guess this is the second zone, but there's a pretty great space battle. Yeah. That there's so many ships at one point, it was actually hard to identify which ships were which. Mm-hmm. And that's that's a lot of fun. And uh, the chat room pretty much agrees, too, that... Uh, they, they lack One thing I want to point out in specific was the cave tile set that they used for the ground combat. Totally new. Brand new art assets. Yeah, it, it looked great. And uh, I was trying to determine when I was looking at it, is this something I had seen in a previous like cave mission before, in, like the fire caves or something like that? But no, no you weren't mentioning the struts looked new. and mm-hmm. All the, the support struts they use in the, in the mm-hmm. corridors and everything. I think I'm pretty sure that's all brand new stuff. Yeah, it looked great. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty happy. Yeah. I'm... I'm I'm still holding out. I don't want to be a negative Nancy or a pessimist. I'm usually well, an optimist. Well, you know, but we were talking a bit before the show, and I think we've kind of nailed down where we feel about this. Is we know that the content team is weeks ahead of the actual rollout. 
We um, hope so. They're and already we hope, working. We hope the art team is weeks ahead of the actual rollout. Too. Exactly. But you know, as they keep working on this, eventually it might get to the point where the rollouts start to catch up with how far ahead they are. Right. I mean, it just takes one major delay, like uh, something goes wrong with uh, season three, and they need all hands on deck to mm-hmm. get it out the doors on time, and so they can't keep production. Who knows up. what could happen? And I know they're trying. I know there's already been some talk about maybe not going weekly, maybe right? Spacing that out, mm-hmm. and maybe that's the direction it needs to go. Because uh, I love the quality bar. I also heard that one of the questions that came up in the Ask Cryptic that was released over the weekend, mm-hmm. which we really haven't got a chance to dig through no, yet, so we're no, kind of no. skipping it. Uh, but one of the questions that was asked is, are these new weekly missions being done with UGC, mm-hmm. with like some beta version of UGC, which I had wondered myself. Yeah. Uh, and the answer was that, no, not really. But we're using the Genesis system which is what's eventually going to become the UGC system in some effect or something like that. It was not exactly a clear answer. You know, we haven't been able to see exactly how Genesis works, but based on some of the descriptions and uh, the technological explanations of what Genesis does, it sounds like all you really need to do to turn that into UGC is get a good UI built on it. Yeah, a good tool set to interface with it. And, you know, that could take a lot of time. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, nonetheless, uh, we also know that that's an important uh, feature UGC has become a very important feature for Stowe because they're also going to use that in the new Neverwinter Nights title. Yeah, and so the uh, money and just, time just Neverwinter, right? Just Neverwinter. <laughs> uh, the the money being spent uh, for Stowe to develop this tool set is going to turn around to the next project. So we know there's a hot priority on that. Yeah, that's one way that a new title being worked on at the company benefits Stowe. Yeah, we can hope it, it yeah. will anyway. It looks that's like our it assumption. Is. Right. That's totally an assumption on my part, but yeah. <laughs> it seems to make sense. And I may, I came up with it, so it must be brilliant, right? Shot in the dark. <laughs> you know what? Well, Why don't I stop flapping my gums and let's get into the real brilliance. Let you flap your gums. Let's do the community feedback. That crazy epic intro to this segment. I mean, crazy epic. Stupid. I love that one. That does signal it as our community feedback segment. And uh, in this episode, we're we're continuing to feature some of your character bios that you've been This is the last batch that we're going to be featuring on the show this time around. We got so many great responses, we'll probably do this again in the future at some point. And also, a lot of people did go ahead and uh, cross-post theirs in the Jupiter Colony. Mm -hmm. And also, a lot of people have been posting links to their captain's blog on the Cryptic website. Absolutely. So you can just go check it there if you want. The thing I like about that is... Uh, you can just edit in one spot from then on, and it's always a living right. version of it. Uh, now, before we get into the really meaty uh, bios, we did have a couple that we wanted to give honorable mention to. Do you yeah, to I'll go those? through these pretty quick. All but right. the, the first one came from E Buyer, who's a We've friend talked, of the show. Yeah. He's, he's sent in a, a, some uh, answers to previous questions and everything. Mm-hmm. But you know, his bio is pretty simple, relatively straightforward. He's a human. Uh, there was some cryogenic accident or something. I, I don't remember all of it. Oh, it was but something the, cool though. It was like he had he to was do an, an emergency an escape. astronaut from the 21st yeah, century. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he did an emergency escape, and there was a when he when he jettisoned, there was a cryo freeze. Right. System. So he got frozen and then drifted That's through space neat. and and yeah, yada yada. The, my yeah. honorable mention portion of it though is he goes through this entire bio, tells you his life story, and then the very last line is oh, and he has irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> I, you know, because it's always all, all these characters are always so epic in scope. Every every great hero needs a flaw. I know. I love that's his flaw. <laughs> so he had to get an honorable mention just for that. Yeah. Good one, E.B. The all next right. one is from, I, I didn't get his at name, but his character's name is Lol A. Saurus. This gets an honorable mention because he's a Gorn named after, he, his character name is Lolasaurus. Clever. Clever. There's some mention of uh, the Philosopher Raptor as one of his other characters or one of his boss or something. Or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's just a funny little story. Okay. Uh, not particularly good, but, but it, fun to read. <laughs> it gave you a tickle when you're going yeah. through all of them. Yeah. Now, the last one that's on our honorable mention list is from a guy named Ethan. Um, and if you're watching Ethan, keep up the great work. Yeah. Because the reason you're on our honorable mentions is because Ethan is 12 years old. Yeah, and his Vulcan had a pretty epic, dramatic story mm-hmm. with his parents and all this kind of stuff. It was a good one. And uh, we just thought it was awesome that we have a 12-year-old, uh, watch for one, watching the show. Think about this. And playing the game. Uh, the last Star Trek ep- um, season, or uh, last TV series, yeah, Enterprise went off the air in 2005. 
That's five okay. years ago. That means that Ethan was only seven years old when the last Enterprise uh, episode wow. was aired. So it's possible that he wasn't even into it back then, and he's never known a world where Star Trek was not just reruns. Maybe his folks, big Trekkies, probably. I, I I would have to assume. I'd be curious to know though if he wants to write in and tell us. And what else I'd be curious about is how he, uh, the younger generation, like his his age, feels about the new Star Trek movie as opposed to the older. Hey, stuff. maybe that's what got him in. It's possible. Curious to know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, his story was pretty freaking good, actually, yeah. for a 12-year-old. Yep. He had a pretty good Vulcan storyline with some mm-hmm. drama in there from his mom, and it was, uh, you felt for him. Yeah. So it was a good story, so we wanted to give him an honorable mention. Now, we did get some big meaty ones written in, too, that we wanted to cover. Now, we should mention, these will be cross-posted over at jupitercolony.com, so mm-hmm. you can always check them out there and leave your own comments for the original author to see. Uh, do you want to kick off the first one here by at Iron Earth? Yeah, um, just to give you guys an intro to it, I'm going to go ahead and read his opening paragraph. Think of a metal. Picture the most desirable metal in existence. Okay. Do you see silver, gold, latinum perhaps? All of these are rare elements that carry with them traits such as royalty, beauty, and power. Ooh. Our protagonist, Alec Michael Paul Maynard, is a revered captain of piracy, attributed to iron for the qualities that it possesses. Dark, sturdy, and common. It is often condescended metal of both integrity and fortitude that isn't pretty, but is used for the toughest jobs due to its reliability in handling just about any task thrown at it, no matter how dense the crap. What does that mean? Uh, it just goes to show that, you know, the salt of the earth, the real down yeah, to earth. Yeah, yeah. Just get the job done, kind uh-huh. of guy. He's got an, a really great story that I'll be reposting on the colony. That's just the opening paragraph. That's a great opening paragraph. It goes on for pages and pages. <laughs> it's really great. It's really awesome. Pr- quite well written. You gotta love the guys that really sit there and take the time to put some of that extra flair into it. Yeah. All right. So what's <clears throat> next? What do we got? The next one is from uh, I believe his at name is Sting, but it's like it's got like an apostrophe. S Sting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's a Vulcan. Okay. Uh, that was tied. His story, the reason that I'm mentioning it is because his story takes two very disparate elements and combines them in a very narrative-driven, believable manner. Oh, really? First of all, he starts off as a sympathizer for Spock's unification efforts, and then through a series of events ends up kidnapped and assimilated by the Borg and that's becomes rough. a reclaimed Vulcan Borg. That's rough. Yeah, that's a rough life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But so, it's, it's a good story. Another that does sound one that, like, that's worth the read, and I will be posting that on the colony as well. All right. Very nice, sir. Now we've got one more we thought we'd feature in this episode. Now, this one is actually more than one. Uh, what? This, uh, this is a whole series of characters oh. that's all from the same person, uh, at name 451. That's a primarily Borg-driven series of stories from different uh, Borg drones. That's awesome. All with different numbers. And I did not see this one at all. This is... Uh, They've got a whole blog site dedicated to the stories of this. Huh. And uh, there are stuff going all the way back to June of 2010. Uh, so just a couple months, actually. But look at this. Uh, Very cool. Several, five at least from each of these different chapters, five different chapters. And it's still ongoing. The last update was September 5th. Huh. So, which was yesterday. <laughs> that's that's some dedication. That's yeah. really getting into your character and... Um, you know, I've noticed every time that I've gotten more invested into my character and getting into his story, I've enjoyed the outcome of the game and it makes the little, even the little missions seem to matter just a little more. Yeah. It really makes you feel invested in the outcome of every little thing you do, even down to deciding what weapons you're going to use. Right. Would my character actually use a disruptor? Right. Actually. And I, I specifically have two blasters equipped it because it just looks cool in my, I'm walking around in a, in a suit. Yeah. (laughs) It just looks cool to have two, two handheld guns in a suit. Yeah. Hey. I can't help it. I like yeah. to get into my character. Captain Pike's a badass. What can now, I say? That's about all we've got that we're going to be uh, featuring from the character bios. But like I said, we'll probably do this again in the future at I some point. So. At that time, we'll ask you to resend them. Now, yeah. if yours didn't get featured, feel free to post on the colony. Yeah. Um, it's an open forum, and you guys can share your, your cap- captain bios with everybody. Yep. Head over to jupitercolony.com for that. And then also, uh, we do these shows very occasionally live, but the best place to find out when all our live stuff happens is over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash calendar or... The Facebook page. Yeah, Facebook.com. Yeah, Facebook. Facebook. Com. Slash Jupiter Broadcasting. And you really want to keep an eye on that for this week if you're interested in PAX coverage. Because yeah. as we mentioned, yep. uh, Tuesday night will be live, Friday night will be live. 
Oh, I wanted to mention. Hmm. We're working on a great question for next week. Yeah, we haven't figured out how to phrase it correctly We're kicking yet. around. We were going to introduce it in this episode, but we thought we're going to give ourselves a little more time to, to fully bake it. But we will have a brand new community feedback question for you, and I really am looking forward to getting your guys' input on that. Do you want to give them at least a little tease about it? Well, we could mention it's going to involve fleets and their impact on the game. And maybe expand to social interaction beyond that. Well, again, we'll have the real question next week. Yeah, it's... It's going to be one of these that's it's meant to fundamentally improve the entire community quality of the game, and we right. really want to try to figure out how to phrase it for you guys. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's everything we have for this week's episode of Stoked. We'll be back next Tuesday over at jupiterbroadcasting.com, and until then, have a great Stoke week.